This is the third video in the series of using CamTrap R to summarise and extract data from camera trap images. What we've done previously is to work through how to um, set up your images and how to get your desktop and CamTrap R set up and um, have the background data loaded so that you can then go through and create these various summary tables out of the um, species record table. What I'm going to show you here now is another piece of data extraction which is about getting a detection history out. And we're going to use a detection history in another video uh, where I show you how to calculate occupancy. So the detection history is created for a particular species. And the detection history shows you on a day-by-day basis for each camera trap station when that species was detected or not. And I'm going to focus on Rattus fuscopes for this one. So when we create the object, as with all of our files, it's really, I can't stress enough how important it is that you use intuitively understandable file names or object names so that you can easily keep track of um, you know, what is what in your folders. So I'm going to work with Rattus fuscopes here and I've chosen it because it's uh, quite a, a common species so it's a good one to do a detection history for. Um, we're, again the, the function detection history we have to tell it the name of the record table so remember that we're, we're ditching this one and we're using this so I'll just replace that Actually, I'll, I'll leave it incorrect for now, just so that you can see the error. Because um, I think it's probably it's more instructive to see errors in some ways than it is just to see it all happen smoothly. So we need to. This is where we use that um, camera plot, the operation plot from earlier, um, because this is where it's important to differentiate between an uh, absence of a bush rat due to they're not being a bush rat there as opposed to the camera not working. We need to tell it what species we're using and this species name needs to exactly match the metadata species name which will be you know, the species name as it appears in any of these output CSV files we're, we created in the previous videos. Again you need to tell it in the record table what the station and species columns are called and these shouldn't change for you um, because the record table is created by CamTrap R, it's fairly standard. Um, it's useful to give it the date time format and it should be in this format for you. Um, occasion length, um, this is where we tell R how long a single occasion is. So in our detection history we're specifying in this case that it's a daily detection history. You might, if you were had cameras set out over months and months, you might pool your detections into weekly detection histories or so forth. Um, this is clock time, so we're telling it that each one day starts at 6am, which is as close as I could get to sunrise. Um, yep, we're telling it that um, occasions begin at the station setup date. So our first occasion is going to be a little bit abbreviated because we didn't, you know, that first day isn't a full 24 hours, so we're just telling it that. Um, we're including the effort. We're not worrying about scaling the effort. So if we had different numbers of cameras at each camera station, we might want to scale the effort at each station, but that's irrelevant to us. Um, as always, it's a good idea to write CSV files. And in fact, we need to do it here because we're going to be calling this CSV file when we run the unmarked script for our occupancy analysis in a sec. Um, we're telling it where we want to put it. Um, I've already got a detection histories folder set up. Um, some of the functions in R, in CamTrap R, will create the folder for you. Um, others you have to do it yourself. If in doubt, just do it yourself. Um, you'll get an error and figure it out soon enough if you haven't created it and it needs you to. And again, the time zone is important. So I'm going to run this, remembering that we're going to get an error first up. And it's, again, you know, these error messages are typically pretty easy to interpret if you just take a deep breath and look. 
it's telling us object SPRT is not found. So we just have a look at where that is in here. Oh, that's the record table. Oh, and we'll remember, of course, the record table has this name. So I'm just going to update it. SPR, I've hit insert by mistake. There we go. SPRT um, underscore mod. And it's time. Hopefully it will work. Um, yep, uh, we can see that it's been created. We can actually have a look at it now. Let's see if it worked. Um, I've got this sticky enter key. So there we go. So the detection history consists of two data frames. That's why in here it says it's a list of two. The first is the detection history. So we have the stations down here, and then these are the occasions. 14 occasions. In this case, we specified they were days. So each of these is a day from 6 a.m. in the morning to 5.59 a.m. the next day. Ones mean that there was a bush rat detected. Zeros mean there were no bush rats on that day. And NAs mean that the camera trap wasn't operating. And we can actually have a look at this plot here, and you can sort of relate it directly across. The difference here is it's going from 1 to 12, from top to bottom, and here it's reversed. But you can see that same pattern. BC12 um, for the first set of days the camera was set but we see there's zeros meaning it was set but there were no bush rats and then for the last five days the camera wasn't working so that looks good and the second data frame is effort which is basically the camera operability matrix so we're not going to use that again now um, but we will use it when we do further analysis um, which I'll deal with in another video shortly.